If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. So today, someone came up out of the lake, uh, had been fishing all day, and yelled over to me, Hey, I got some catfish. You want one for tonight's supper? And immediately you have to start going through your checklist of rules. And sure enough, my checklist quickly came up with, no, well, wait a minute, why can't I have catfish? Well, it's illegal. In the state of Florida, I'm a Missourian. In the state of Florida, you're not allowed to possess wildlife without a permit. But when you're a nomad, how much time are you going to really put into researching every law that could possibly uh, get you in trouble, like someone giving you a fish. So unfortunately, a lot of the things that you are, could possibly experience out in your nomadic lifestyle, you're gonna have to say no to simply because you don't know the rules. I kind of learned this the hard way last year, although I didn't do anything wrong. Somebody warned me last year during hunt season that if the if the Florida Wildlife Commission, I think it is, the FWC, comes to your camper and asks to search it, you have to allow them to search it. And I said, without a warrant, and for anybody who's outside the United States, we have a constitutional right that says that basically the police officers can't search your stuff without a warrant signed by a judge unless there's probable cause. Apparently, the probable cause uh, part of that is used loosely when it comes to Florida Wildlife Commission, FWC. Because they can say, well, we have probable cause that someone is hunting in this area illegally. And so anyway, last year, FWC came to our camper, knocked on the door and says, I need to see inside your cooler. Well, we didn't have any coolers. Uh, and so I said so. And he pointed up to the... the a cooler that I had, which I didn't think about as a cooler because I had tools in it. And I said, well, that has all my tools in it. I need to see it. So I showed him and it had tools. He says, we're looking for anybody in possession of deer meat. Well, I, I didn't even have a hunting license. I was there camping. And he says, let me see inside your refrigerator. And I had to open up my refrigerator. Now, a lot of people ask me all the time on the live feeds, I have a live feed every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern, if I go fishing. And the answer is no, I don't go fishing because it would be too costly for me to have a fishing license in every state. You know, I, it would, I'm sure you have extra costs as a result of being out of state uh, fishermen, and, and it would just get too costly too quick. It wouldn't even be beneficial to fish. So I, I, the, I don't even try to, to look up the rules and the laws. Look, I spend so much time looking up the rules and regulations of campsites just so I can spend two weeks in a campsite. I spend four to 12 hours every two weeks looking up the rules and regulations of campsites, trying to find campsites. There is no way that I can sit around looking up the rules and regulations of wildlife laws. Now, I can hear all the naysayers right now say, well, if it was me, I'm a constitutionalist, I'm going to say, no, they can't search me. Well, here's a couple few things to that. First of all, while I'm frying up the fish tonight and the uh, FWC show up, I can't really hide the fact that I'm cooking a catfish. I'm in possession of a catfish. And so what is he going to say? Where'd you get the catfish? Oh, I got it at the grocery store. Okay, so then he's going to go over to the trash can, look inside the trash can, and see all the skin parts that I just skinned the catfish with. So no, I'm in possession of an illegal catfish while I'm cooking it. You can't get around it. So let's say he does come into my camper, he opens up my freezer, and he sees this catfish in it. I'm sure somebody's going to resist the idea of letting him in your camper. Fine. You have a constitutional right, I guess, to say, look, you don't have a right to come into my camper. So he arrests you. Okay, let's just say he arrests you or arrest me. Let's say he arrests me for refusing to let him see inside my refrigerator. I don't know if he can or not, but let's just say he does. I, they say all they need is probable cause. So he comes in, he sees the catfish and he arrests me. Well, sure, I can go to court and I can fight that he didn't have a warrant or probable cause. And let's just say I win in court. 
that he didn't have probable cause. But the thing is, I don't think a lot of people recognize when it comes to fighting these things and your constitutional right is how much are you willing to spend? First of all, let's just assume he arrests me and leaves Carolyn behind. Well, that means Carolyn is out here all by herself trying to survive in a camper that she has already said she would not do unless I was with her. So I guess the first thing she's going to do is go back to Missouri while I'm sitting in jail. Secondly, who's going to bail me out? Let's just assume for a minute that they arrest me and Carolyn. We're down here in Florida, unable to get anybody to help bail us out. So we sit in jail until our court date. Of course, we have a right to a speedy trial, but you're going to, you're going to, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to uh, waive your right to a speedy trial because you're going to want to make sure that you get a good lawyer, $100, $200 an hour to get a good lawyer to come in here and fight you, the state of Florida on whether they had a right to see, to go into your camper to see if you had a catfish in there that you actually had. You were in violation of the law for having the catfish in the first place right even if they didn't have probable cause or a warrant and they had no way to and you could prove they didn't have probable cause you still had the catfish so i don't see the point in actually violating the laws just so you can prove a point that you can fight the judicial system when in all actuality you didn't have to have the fish in the first place or get arrested I mean, in my case right now, if the FWC come down right now and say, hey, I want to see inside your refrigerator, okay, and I have nothing to hide. If you get caught out here as a nomad, violating the law, it is going to be very difficult to resolve your problem simply because someone asked you if you wanted a catfish. So instead of looking up the rules, it's just sometimes simpler to just say, no, thank you, I appreciate it and carrying on. Thanks for watching. Click like if you like the video and happy travels.